Can a solar generator save you money on your electric bill and can it eventually pay for itself? This is my $1,500 setup and to answer these questions, I need to know how much it offsets my grid usage. So I'm gonna track that over the course of three days, a sunny day, a partly cloudy day, and then a rainy day to get an idea of its average. Once we know that, we'll crunch the numbers to see if a solar generator can save you money. How can it save you money? Well, today is day one of three, the sunny day. So why don't I just go upstairs and show you the setup in action. The solar panels come in through the window and then they go to charge the power station here, which is essentially a big portable battery. And I use it to run devices and appliances, mainly my workstation and the window air conditioner. 320 watts are coming in from the 400 watts of solar panels I have outside and 520 watts are being used by everything that I've plugged in. And that is all electricity that I would normally be paying the power company for. But now that electricity is coming entirely from the power station, which itself is charged from the solar panels. In other words, everything I've plugged into here is running entirely off of solar at the moment. And you may have noticed, but the power station is plugged into the wall right now, but it is currently not charging from the wall and I'll touch on that later on. And throughout the day, I just turn the AC unit on and off depending on the battery percentage. And one cool thing about this setup is you can control the outlets remotely and set them on automatic timers. So I could turn my AC unit on and off even when I'm out of the house. So I just looked at the numbers for the solar setup and today it offset 1.75 kilowatt hours, which works out to around 12% of my home's daily energy usage. But again, before we can estimate savings, we need to see how well this setup performs in other types of weather beyond just perfectly sunny weather to get a better sense of how much energy it offsets on average. So today, day two is a cloudy day. And currently we are only getting around 60 watts from the solar panels. So the setup is definitely gonna offset less energy today. How much less, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. And I know this video is all about saving money, but just to be frank, I view this as more of a side benefit. The main advantage of these small solar generators is going to be having backup power for a blackout and being a bit more energy independent. Day two is over and the solar setup offset 1.08 kilowatt hour. So quite a bit less than day one. That's why we're trying to get the average here. And that works out to around seven to seven and a half percent of my home's daily energy usage. So the setup actually brought in 1.5 kilowatt hours from the solar panels, but some of that I didn't use. And then some of that is just gonna be lost in the process from things like having the AC outlets on. But where I live in Nashville, it rains roughly one out of every three days so my average would not be complete without day three, a day that is overcast and rainy. And once again, very little solar power coming in to start the day, only 67 watts. But compared to yesterday, it is supposed to be much, much cloudier today. So I expect the setup to offset way less energy. These solar generator setups have a very clear trade-off, which is they're way easier to put together than a completely DIY setup, but also pricier. $1,500 is definitely on the expensive end for this size setup, but in the video I made about it, I talk about how you can get it for closer to 1,000. So let's come back to this. Why is the power station plugged into the wall? It's because this particular unit has a feature where you can set a battery percentage and mine is set to 10%. And above that level, it will only run off of solar power. And then below that level, it will pull from the grid. However, I've noticed that this mode does use a little bit of grid power for whatever reason, which is what I am tracking with the smart plug down there. We will take that into account when we crunch the numbers. The weather ended up being a mix of cloudy and rainy and sunny weather. And overall it was cooler upstairs. So I ran the AC unit a little bit less than the previous days. Day three is done. And today the solar setup offset 0.856 kilowatt hours or 856 watt hours, which means our average for the three days was 1.23 kilowatt hours. How can I base the calculations we're about to do off of just three days of data? Well, actually I've been using this setup for weeks now and I went back and totaled up all the totals from the last few weeks and it actually equaled almost exactly the same, 1.236 kilowatt hours in that case. So these three days were actually a very good representative sample for my area, which is why I picked them. Time to crunch the numbers. So I made this whole spreadsheet and it'll help us answer, first off, how much grid energy can this solar generator setup offset? 
we'll look at a few different scenarios. So a worst case scenario, which is my scenario actually, an average scenario, and then a best case scenario. And then we will see how these energy figures translate into actual savings on your electric bill. So over the three days of testing for my scenario, this setup offset 1.18 kilowatt hours on average. So that's that 1.23 kilowatt hour figure we calculated minus the little bit of power that the power station pulls from the grid each day when it's in self-powered mode. I pulled that from the smart plug. Interesting to see 86% efficiency, which in this case means 86% of the solar input made it out of the power station as output, which I've seen higher for this power station, closer to like 90%, but that's just what it was for these past three days. I graphed it out so you can see how much of a reduction we got from the solar setup. The blue bars are what my grid usage would have been without the solar setup, and then the red bars are my grid usage with the solar setup, a huge reduction each day. Okay, for the average energy figures, I'm using a daily solar potential of four kilowatt hours per kilowatt. What the heck does that mean? Basically, if you have one kilowatt of solar panels, then on an average day, you would collect four kilowatt hours of, you know, of energy. So that, if you're looking at the map, it's these places in like yellow and light orange. Uh, which is places like the northern and eastern US, southern Europe, you know, like India, most of South America. So what that does is it gives us an average solar input of 1.6 kilowatt hours per day because we're using 0.4 kilowatts of solar or 400 watts. Then we assume the same grid input and efficiency rate from the previous scenario and we get 1.33 kilowatt hours of grid energy offset per day. Again, we are gonna use these numbers in just a sec to estimate monthly savings on your electric bill. That's why we're doing all this. And finally, for the best case scenario, I'm using an average daily solar potential of five kilowatt hours per kilowatt, which is the darker orange areas on the map, like the Southwestern US, Mexico, uh, you know, obviously Northern Africa, Middle East, and lots of Australia. Again, assuming all those rates we got from the data we collected, you get 1.68 kilowatt hours of grid energy offset per day. Savings time. Again, we will start with a worst case type scenario and then work our way up to a best case scenario. I'll just say now, you will be surprised by the differences in the payback periods between the different scenarios. They're quite large. Worst case savings scenario is having a low, very low cost of electricity, like I do, I pay 11 cents per kilowatt hour, very low. You know, offsetting not that much energy per day. This number is from the worst case scenario that we just calculated above. And I have a worst case scenario because I have a lot of shade in my yard. And you're paying a lot for equipment like I did. I was using parts I already had, some of which were just not the cheapest. Over the three days of testing, I saved 40 cents, not that much. Per day, I'm saving 13 cents. Per month, I'm shaving four bucks off my electric bill. And per year, I'm saving around 50 bucks. Uh, in this worst case scenario, the payback period is around 30 years, not great, but again, you will be surprised by how much better the other scenarios look compared to this. I graphed out the payback over the first 10 years, which is just kind of an arbitrary time frame I picked. By the end of 10 years, you're still in the red by $1,000. For the average savings scenario, we're assuming the average cost of electricity in the US, which is currently 17 cents. We're pulling the energy figure from the average scenario above, and we're assuming you get some parts for a bit cheaper than I did, and your total cost uh, for a similar setup is about $1,250. Your daily savings would be 23 cents, so closer to a quarter a day, roughly $7 saved per month, and 83 bucks saved per year, which halves your payback period, it halves it to 15 years. So after 10 years, you're still in the negative, but this time by around $400 compared to $1,000. The best case savings scenario uses the current average cost of electricity in California, which is 32, 32 and a half cents. Again, pulling the daily grid energy offset figure from the best case scenario above and for the cost of equipment for a setup like this, around $1,000, What's the best case savings scenario look like? You're saving 54 cents per day, over two quarters per month, $16 in per year, 
almost $200. That brings your payback period down to just five years. Graphed out over 10 years, you're breaking even just after the start of year five. And at the end of 10 years, you could be in the green by almost $1,000. So if the numbers work out in your favor, you might wonder what happens if you scale this up? Could you get greater savings and a faster payback period? Well, I did the calculations. So here we are assuming your grid energy offset is three times as much because your setup has three times the amount of solar. And I did some quick online research, uh, you know, some online shopping research, and you could pretty easily get a setup like that for double the budget or $2,000. Your daily average savings could be as high as $1.63. That's, that's a lot of quarters, <laughs> nearly $50 per month and close to $600 per year, bringing that payback period down to a little over three years. By the end of 10 years, that's a lot of green. Of course, all these scenarios have a lot of assumptions, like very obvious ones you're probably thinking of, like does my property get good sun? Uh, and then I've listed here just a few of the ones you might not immediately think of. There are a lot of different DIY routes you could go. Uh, this is just giving you some inspiration, but if this is making you want to go the professional route and hire a solar installer, then I'll put a link to a solar calculator below where you can estimate your specific home's savings potential if you went that route. Uh, and here's the QR code for that link if you're watching on TV. And I've heard from a lot of y'all recently that you've been able to get similarly sized or bigger solar generator setups for less. So I would love to hear more about that in the comments. You know, what does your setup look like? How much did you pay for it? How much is it saving you per day if you're using it in this way? Uh, and if you wanna see the full video about this $1,500 setup, then I'll link it right here. And in that video, I also go through how you can get it for closer to $1,000. But that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.